let's talk about the management of PCOS. See, the management of PCOS, it depends on the problem with which the patient comes to you. Right now, as I told you, the short term problems, we are going to deal with the short term problems. So the short term problem with which the patient can come to me is irregular cycle. Now, when a, whenever a female comes to me with irregular cycles, always the drug of choice is OCPs. Now, when you are using OCPs in patients of PCOS, you have to remember two things. Number one, you have to use low dose OCPs. Low dose OCPs means that the estrogen should be less than 20 micrograms. Right? Why? Because in PCOS, the levels of estrogen are raised. So we want to give them less estrogen. And number two, the progesterone should belong to third or fourth generation. And what are the third or the fourth generation progesterones? Quickly tell me what are they? So the third generation progesterones are gestodine, desogestrel, and nor gestimate and fourth generation progesterones they are spironolactone derivatives and they are your dinogest and ciproteron acetate right so these are the fourth generation progesterone. So whenever you are using OCPs in a PCOS patient, you have to be very careful that the levels of estrogen should be less. In other words, it should be a low dose OCP and progesterone should belong to third or fourth generation. Why? Because first and second generation progesterones, they have androgenic side effects, which we do not want in a PCOS patient. Preferably, you should use a fourth generation pill because fourth generation pills are anti-androgenic. Fourth generation progesterones are anti-androgenic, right? Now, this is the preferred thing in irregular cycles. But suppose if a patient refuses OCPs. She says, no, I do not want to take OCPs. In that case, you will have to give her a withdrawal of progesterone every month. Every time she doesn't bleed, every time uh, she doesn't have her period, you will have to give her a withdrawal of progesterone in which you are going to give progesterone for five days. Right, you're going to give progesterone for five days and then you are going to stop it. Now, when you give progesterone for five days, that progesterone will is going to support the endometrium and the moment you stop it, the support will be lost and patient will bleed, right? But we do not prefer this method, this withdrawal method for two reasons. Number one, this withdrawal is never going to regularize the cycles. It will never regularize her cycle, number one. And number two, it is not protective for endometrium. Right, when you are giving OCPs, you are giving OCPs for 21 days. So for 21 days, you are giving progesterone to her. And progesterone, all of you know, it protects against endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer. But if you are giving progesterone only for five days, that is not protective for endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer and both of these chances are increased in a PCOS patient. In order to be protective, progesterone should be minimally given for 14 days, then it has a protective effect on endometrium. For bringing withdrawal, you are giving progesterone only for 5 days. So this is the second choice. The best answer for irregular cycles is OCPs because it is going to regularize the cycles and it is going to have a protective effect on the endometrium as well, right? So that is if patient comes to you with irregular cycles. Now, if patient comes to me with the complaint of hirsutism, now, if a patient is coming to me with complaint of hirsutism, then also the drug of choice is OCPs, right? Why OCPs? Because progesterone is going to have a negative feedback on LH, so progesterone will have a negative feedback on LH and that is why the levels of androgen will decrease and estrogen is going to increase the sex hormone binding globulin. Just now I told you estrogen increases sex hormone binding globulin. 
right? And because the sex hormone binding globulin will increase, the free testosterone levels will decrease, right? Again, the same thing. I want to give them low dose OCPs and with third or fourth generation progesterone. Right now, these OCPs I have to give for a period of three to six months. Now, if it fails, then the second choice drug is spironolactone. Spironolactone. If that also fails, then the third choice drug is ciproterone acetate. Ciproterone acetate. Right. The other drugs which you can use are, number one, you can use GnRH agonist or antagonist. Why you can use GnRH agonist or antagonist? Whenever you are using GnRH agonist to treat hirsutism, you are going to give it in a continuous manner. And you all know that when you give GnRH in a continuous manner, it decreases LH and FSH. And so it is going to decrease the production of all the hormones from the ovary. So not only will the levels of estrogen decrease, the levels of androgens will also decrease when you give uh, GnRH in a continuous manner. Right, that is one drug which you can use. Number two, you can use flutamide or finasteride. Flutamide and finasteride, they are again anti-androgenic drugs. And you can use metformin. Metformin has mild anti-hirsute properties. It has mild anti-hirsute properties. Right now about metformin, there are two things which you have to remember. Metformin, it is non-teratogenic, right? And number two, it is the drug of choice for insulin resistance in PCOS, right? So these are the two things which you have to remember about metformin. And this is how you treat hirsutism. Apart from these drugs, you can also use a drug which you can give topically and you can that topical drug is eflornithine eflornithine right now whenever they will give you a question on hirsutism they will say all of the following drugs can be used to treat hirsutism except and in that except you will always have danazol why because danazol's side effect is hirsutism Right, so it can never be used to treat hirsutism. Right, so its side effect is hirsutism. Clear to all of you? Okay, so this is how you manage hirsutism. Mm -hmm.